Chapter 1. Your true self is perfect, even when you have doubts. Would you believe it if someone told you that you don't need an extra thing to make you complete? Yes, it's best to be yourself at all times. Remember how complete you felt as a baby, even without a single possession or achievement? Your ultimate achievement was in the fact that you possessed a human life, and that in itself was and still is extremely valuable. There's always the temptation to find fulfillment in being someone else other than you. That feeling when no one else seems to like the things you like. Well, it's okay to like what you like, even if no one else does. Remember, there's power in what you think of yourself. You don't become a good person by believing you are a bad person. Going through life, you have a plethora of feelings suggesting different things. While such feelings may be true, the things they'd be leading you to believe could all be lies. Time has a way of always revealing that the sermons your feelings preach to you are mere assumptions, not facts. So again, a positive perspective and a hopeful mind become an asset in your downtime because your feelings would seek to blur your vision. However, a hopeful mind would help you gradually move towards the point when you must have parted with the pain. The point where you'd see that you are not the pain. You are not your downtime. You are not that ugly situation. You are you, and that depression is not you. If you hung on yet a little while, you'd have moved on. Your experience would have changed, and you'd have discovered you're just okay in being you. You are more than the pain you go through, and you'd always be there, even after it's all gone. This summary enlightens you on how to keep hope alive, even if it's the smallest piece of it. It emphasizes living in the hope of the possibility of a better future, no matter how gloomy today may seem to be. The only thing we need is to exist and to hope. Matt Haig Chapter 2. Words can be the escape route from pain. Circumstances have a way of messing with our minds to trap us in the present and get us all muddled up in our pain. Refuse to be confined. Instead, dare to journey with your mind. See today from tomorrow's perspective and be grateful that you made it through the pain of today. Speaking the right words can set you free from the strongholds in your mind. But saying words doesn't just mean speaking aloud. It also means writing them down. Keep in mind, writing down your pain helps you separate yourself from the hurt, clears your mind, and prepares you to share it with others. It's okay to write down how you feel or the things you crave. Also consider writing about your bad feelings because doing so won't make you feel worse. On the contrary, it'll only bring out that feeling that you formerly locked up and help you deal with it better. It is like shining light in your soul and seeing your worries and insecurities. This is what words do for you. They bring to light the way you feel inside. They help you analyze them critically until you realize and discard feelings and cravings you find unnecessary. They help you move on with words that keep your mind hopeful and your perspective positive. The way to move on after a painful experience is to let go of many things that don't matter. It's like arranging your room. You're going to sweep out several things and hang on to others. Bringing the unwanted things out helps you dispose of them and see what you need to keep. Chapter 3. People are important, but don't get lost in the crowd because you matter most. To understand how weak you are is to understand how much you need others. For example, though delicate, the purple saxifrage survives in the Arctic because the plants cluster together. As they say, there is strength in unity. However, there is no strength in losing yourself in a bid to accommodate others. In an actual sense, you'd attract the wrong kind of person if you keep presenting a version of yourself that is not true. The problem is that in forming alliances, we try to fit in instead of attracting our own tribe. Get comfortable with people not liking you. It'll help you see true friends in those who do. You are a priority, and you must not lose yourself in trying to sustain relationships. You don't belong everywhere, so it's okay not to belong anywhere. Remember, you don't have to say yes to everything. It may not go down well with a lot of people, but it'll help keep you alive and sane. If the only way not to lose yourself and your mind is to lose friends, then it's okay. It's better to let go of people not compatible with you because keeping a million incompatibilities would still leave you lonely. You are not as lonely when you have no company as when you surround yourself with people with whom you cannot be you. The very first approach to choosing the right company is to know yourself. You must come to terms with two contrasting facts as you relate to other people. First, you must understand that you are you and others are others. You are not others and they are not you. You cannot control others. You can only control yourself. 
So learn to control your relationships from within. Don't depend on what others think of you to define you. You will not find your self-worth in their minds. Secondly, as you try to trust your own judgment above that of others, remember that you could also be wrong as much as others can. Therefore, you must learn to forgive, as it also allows you to forgive yourself when the time comes. Chapter 4. The ability to be in the present moment is a major component of mental wellness. We are often looking for the meaning of life instead of just living it. Other times we concentrate so hard on achieving something that we stay distracted from living life. Life is not a puzzle to solve or a destination to reach. It is exploring the present enough to grant you access to the future. So don't be in a hurry to see tomorrow when you have not fully exhausted today. Smile at someone, eat your favorite meal, see a movie. Just make sure to enjoy the beauty of today before moving into tomorrow. Keep in mind, living life to the fullest allows you to make conscious decisions that directly affect you. There's no ideal time called life. Every moment is part of life. Enjoy it. Yes, those bad days and those down times are part of life. Live through them. They form part of the whole picture, like an artwork made of dark and bright strokes. The bright strokes are not the totality of the artwork, nor are the dark ones. They all make up a beautiful piece, so the way to live life is to live through it. If you can't stop the rain, why not let it drench you? After all, it won't rain forever. So many people spend their whole lives expecting the future that they have no time to enjoy because they are looking ahead to the next new future. Life is today, not yesterday or tomorrow. You wouldn't know a good day if you've never had a bad one. You wouldn't know joy if you've not known woe. So, in the real sense, good and bad are interwoven together to make up the piece called life. So to live life is to go through your nighttime with the assurance that joy comes in the morning. One day this will be over, and we will be grateful for life in ways we never felt possible before. Matt Haig Did you know, according to a survey carried out by the Cato 2019 Welfare, Work and Wealth National, 83% of Americans believe that their life has meaning. Chapter 5 There's so much strength in having only a little hope. Don't mistake hope for happiness. You don't need to be happy to be hopeful. In truth, the time to be hopeful is amid obscurity. Unfortunately, this is when hope seems to be the most far-fetched. Hope is simply believing in the possibility of a positive future, even amidst obscurity. There's a way to boost your hope by seeing the advantage in your most disadvantaged moment. It is in knowing that for every time you failed, you didn't fail. You actually gain the knowledge of what never to do again. It's like finding your way out of a maze. For every path you took and got lost, you gain the knowledge of a path never to take again. So every wrong path you take brings you closer to taking the right one. In truth, hard times inflate our hope for a better tomorrow. If you were sure of what would happen tomorrow, you'd not need to hope again, would you? The uncertainty of the future is the platform needed to look forward to a positive possibility. Keep in mind, being hopeful makes you have more positive emotions and build better relationships. As much as you could not predict that things would get this bad, you should also be able to believe that it may be impossible to predict how bright the coming days would be. This is hope. That pain and obscurity were not here yesterday. They surely will not be here tomorrow. The time to be happy is not when you are experiencing your ideal future. Knowing that giving your best shot at planning cannot guarantee a perfect future should help you live a happy life today and not procrastinate to a tomorrow that you are not sure of. The joy of living today is that there'd always be tomorrow. That's what life is, a door. The joy is not that it'll open us up to a fruitful field, but that whatever it opens us up to, we'd yet have another door to open. Chapter 6 Finding happiness in the simplest of things will help promote a healthy lifestyle. It's harder to find happiness, peace, and quietness when we keep searching for them in distant places. It's an illusion to think that you must build that house, buy that car, or achieve that goal to be truly happy. You can find happiness even in the abstract. You know, like loving it when nothing is happening, or loving the sound of your footsteps when you walk alone. Well, what is it in seeking happiness in a far-fetched future when you can be grateful for being alive? Don't forget, it really doesn't take much to make a bad day better. Just doing a couple of easy but random things could spark up the light you need to see through a gloomy day. Happiness is everywhere. If only we'd stop reaching out for the unknown and enjoy the known. The world provides us with so much to wonder about, 
but we seldom notice the amazing things because they are always here. Don't be too busy that you are not aware of the simplest truth of yourself. You must not be doing stuff to be alive. Most times, the way to be alive is just to be. Feel through life. Sip your cup of coffee and relax. Don't be too busy in search of happiness you already have. How about pausing and listing all the movies you've seen that brought you comfort and a feeling of fulfillment, even though it was temporal? All you need to fulfill your dreams is not to work hard. It's also okay to rest. Resting doesn't mean you're lazy or you're going to fail. It simply means you're living and enjoying life. You mustn't even be certain of tomorrow before you take a break. You can be uncertain of many things and yet sit down passively doing nothing but listening to the ticking of the clock or the humming of the birds. Worrying will not make the future any more certain, nor will it make you any happier, but around you lie several sources of hope, especially in the most random of things. Conclusion It is important to overcome the temptation of feeling that you are not enough and the tendency to try to be someone other than yourself. The focus is on the fact that you are as important as your mental health, and you must safeguard yourself from these three things. Circumstances Situations and circumstances try to trap us in the moment, make us lose confidence in the authenticity of ourselves, and deprive us of enjoying the now, leaving us only to hope for an uncertain tomorrow. But we must understand that while it may not be possible to change our situations, it is always possible to change our perspectives towards our situations. Life Life is a way of opening each day, leaving you in the hope of an ideal future that may never come, and robbing you of the opportunity to enjoy the now. We've come to learn that life is not in yesterday or tomorrow, but today. People, time and again we've had to go through that moment of feeling like we don't belong, and that owes to the fact that we expect to be like others and not us. Relating with others is good, but we must understand that we matter most. We must not lose ourselves in trying to gain the alliance of others. The more you insist on being you, the more you find a reason to live each day void of the pressure of fitting in, impressing others, or living in expectation of the future. Everything lies in a balance. Taking care of yourself doesn't mean your choices should hurt others. There's a fine line between expressing healthy self-love and plain selfishness. It's important to stay kind and humane as you go through life. Try this. Try not to think through everything like consciously standing up from your bed, then taking a walk with no destination in mind. After a while, you can head back home from nowhere. On getting home, lay back on your bed and think about how beautiful your day was.